Oh, gosh. Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to never spill your drink again by conquering the science of sloshing. That's right, you heard me, sloshing. So the problem with coffee mugs is this tends to happen a lot. You end up getting a lot of spills if you're not really careful. But why does this happen? And how can you prevent it from happening? It's actually a more interesting question and answer than you might think. So in order to see what's going on here, let's watch what happens as I walk on the treadmill here and see when the liquid begins to spill out of the cup. So when you're not paying attention, the water starts sloshing back and forth and back and forth and it gets higher and higher in amplitude until eventually it spills. So the coffee mug spills relatively easy just when I'm walking on the treadmill. If I just start to move it back and forth and back and forth, eventually it just starts to spill pretty easily. Now before I show you how to solve the problem of spilling cups, let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor. So this video was sponsored by Vikings War of Clans. Vikings War of Clans was inspired by the top PC and RPG games of the 90s that we all loved. Vikings gives you an option to choose your own play style. With 20 million online players, Vikings has become an ever-changing game that's evolving every day because people are always fighting over resources, forging new alliances, and competing in live events. So support my channel by downloading Vikings for free from the link in my description box and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield. So the key here is trying to figure out a cup's natural frequency. Now sloshing engineers have already come up with a formula that describes pretty well how water sloshes around in a cup or a big container. And basically it looks similar to this equation here. What this equation says is that the natural frequency of water to slosh around in a cup is proportional to a function divided by its radius. So basically the radius of the cup. So because in this function the radius is in the denominator, that means that when the R is big, the natural frequency of that cup to slosh around is going to be small. And when the R is small, then the natural frequency of the cup is going to be larger. So the frequency didn't need to be that high before it started spilling. But for the skinnier cup, it has to be a lot higher to spill. But here's the interesting part. For a person walking carrying a cup, Generally, they swing their hand back and forth in the X direction here. So the natural frequency for you to move that cup back and forth when you're walking ranges from around one to two and a half hertz. And if you use the calculation to figure out the natural frequency of a coffee cup, you get the range of around 2.6 to four hertz. So wherever the natural frequency of you walking and the natural frequency of the cup itself match up, that's when the spill happens. So as you're walking, you just add more and more and more energy to it until eventually it spills. So while you're walking, you'll hit the lowest resonant frequency of that cup. But for a smaller diameter cup like this, the resonant frequency is so high, it's out of the range of natural walking. And so you never actually hit the range to spill the cup when it's a skinny cup like this. And that's why, especially if you have really big buckets like this, and you hold it while you're walking and it's really full, it's really easy to spill because it has a very low natural frequency and any multiple of the natural frequency can resonate. So basically, there's a lot of different frequencies that you can walk with that can get the bucket to spill. What I mean is that for a large bucket, the natural frequency might be only about 0.25 hertz. So that means that while you're walking, if you're walking at one hertz, or 1.25 hertz, or 1.5 hertz, any of those are also resonant frequencies of the bucket, and so you can spill it very easily. So now that we understand the reason why coffee mugs are so easy to spill is because of the resonant frequency, in fact, this is about the worst ratio of cup that you could get for human walking. <laughs> because it matches up so well with our natural frequency of walking. But now that we know it's all about natural frequencies, well, all we have to do is dampen the natural frequency. So if you put a spoon in it, it actually makes it a little bit harder to spill as you're walking because it disrupts that natural frequency. But what if we could dampen the natural frequency of the cup completely so that it doesn't spill whatsoever no matter how fast you're walking? Well, there's a way to do that. 
So the problem with having the resonant frequency of the cup match up with your natural walking frequency, you keep adding energy to the wave because as the wave of water is coming this way towards your cup, you're actually pushing it the opposite way. And so you push the cup into the wave and that makes it come up and get stronger. And then it sloshes back the other way. And now as it's going this way, you're pulling the cup back. So it sloshes even bigger. And so it gets bigger and bigger until it spills and flows over the cup. And because your frequencies are matching, you're always opposite each other and you keep building up more and more energy until it flows over. But what if instead of being opposite to each other with the natural frequencies, you were actually the same. So whenever the water was coming towards the cup, the cup was also moving back. Or whenever the water was moving that way, the cup is also moving that way. So if you could make the water and the cup always match the same direction, then your water's never gonna spill. And once you understand this, then you can create an amazingly simple device that lets you never spill any cup again. So all you need is something like this. Now watch what happens when I try to carry this mug. So I can easily pass the walking test on the treadmill, even with a really full cup. So this is filled completely to the brim, and I'm walking without even looking at it, and you can see that it doesn't spill. Okay, now let's try it running up the stairs. <laughs> no spill. So you can see that just by carrying it like this, you can pretty much do anything you want and it doesn't spill. You can even do cool tricks like this. <laughs> no spill. So if you like to spin around in circles while you walk with your drinks, then all you need is a device like this. And so how this works is you just set the cup in the center here, and now the water and the cup become coupled together and they don't move in opposite directions. They always move the same way because they're swinging in the center of mass here. So it's weird, it looks like the cup is like glued in somehow. But it's not glued in at all. Basically just because of the centrifugal force, even if you spin in a circle, it just sticks to the back of the cup. So no matter what, the cup and the water stay right together and nothing spills out. If you don't wanna use a device like this, well then you can just use something that relies completely on surface tension. So for example, I have here a mason jar. So first let me fill it up with water. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. So the water stays in there. Even if I take this pin, you can see it goes in, the water does not come out. But then if you just give it a little shake, it breaks the tension and it falls out. So how is that happening? Well, it was due to water tension, but not in the way you think. So I actually have a screen over the top of this. And this screen allows water to pass through it. But the holes are so close together that the adhesion to the wire and the cohesion with the water can keep it so that it basically just sticks together and doesn't leak out. Unless you give it a shake and break that tension, then it comes out. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the new Action Lab subscription box. It's a great gift idea for people if you're looking for any gift ideas to give somebody a subscription to the Action Lab box. It's great learning and great entertainment. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.